Well, hey there, Sam's here from the Quarterly Book Club. Uh, as you know, if you watched our final Quarterly Book Club on YouTube from 2019, uh, we're completely shifting how we're doing it. So it's no longer gonna be that format of, you know, you get one YouTube video a quarter and it's gonna be me and one or two other people sitting down and discussing the book. It's gonna be more of a read along and we're gonna check in with each other. It took me a little while to get to this one because I, I just had a great reading month in January and I was just finishing up some of them for February. So um, I Tatuba Black Witch of Salem is our very first book for the quarter. I'm really excited to get into this one. The theme for this year is historical fiction. And that's one of my absolute favorite genres. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by reading the very first sentence together. Abina, my mother, was raped by an English sailor on the deck of Christ the King one day in the year of 16, asterisk, asterisk, while the ship was sailing for Barbados. So that's how that started out. This is actually not a very long book. Um, if you do not count the historical notes and do not count the epilogue, um, it's only 172 pages. If you read the epilogue, uh, it's 179. So this is not too shabby. Uh, this is by Maurice Condy, and I believe it's translated from French, and it's translated by Richard Philcox. And I hope you join me along with our book of this quarter, I Tatuba, Black Witch of Salem, Maurice Condy. Now, one thing that I did have a little trouble getting a hold of this book. It's not readily available on e-readers or on audio, and that is my fault for not looking into that. So lesson learned there. Um, all the books so far have been really readily available, and this is the first one that hasn't been. So I will make sure to pay much closer attention to that. I would say check your library first. That's gonna be the best resource. Um, but this is the only one so far and that I've seen in the future that is tough to get a hold of. So I hope that doesn't deter you and I look forward to discussing I Tutuba Black Witch of Salem with you. Bye. About halfway through, like I said last time, it wasn't, it's not that long of a book. It's just, I'm also reading a bunch of other things. I'm a multi-reader, many books at one time. And sometimes, um, ones go on the back burner, but this will be done before the quarter's over and then we'll move into our quarter two book. So some of the things I just wanted to talk about where we're at right now, what has happened so far. Uh, I've also made a bunch of marks in the book. You can see they're, they're uh, folded over dog ear style. So I can remember um, some of the quotes I want to go over and some of the things that really interest that uh, I found really interesting um, or just were just well written and I wanted to notate it. I can't find my book darts. So um, I'm still looking for those, but I know that I've, I've seen them and I, I think I know where they're at. Tutuba, uh, her mother was taken from, uh, her mother uh, was a slave in Barbados. She was married off to another man and then uh, her mother did not want her. She's, she's a child of a very unfortunate um, abuse. And, but the man that she was married to loved Tutuba very much and they had a really great relationship and she was out with her mother one day, a man wanted to do that same abuse again, and she ended up uh, hurting him with a, with a sword, not a sword, but um, a rapier. Yeah, the, the type of sword. So, and then she was hung. Tutuba has witnessed the hanging of her mother. We'll skip forward a little bit to more her teen years. She no longer had, uh, she lost her, her, who is her adoptive father. Um, so he is no longer in the picture and she was sort of taken care of by the other slave houses and people who took her in, fed her, and then she ended up out in the woods by herself, built herself a cabin. So she's like that, the, the witch in the woods. Um, she does a lot of healing. She was taken in by a woman called Mama Yaya, and that has been the person who taught her how to use the herbs and the land to get what you need and how to speak to the spirits uh, once they've crossed that veil. And Mama Yaya passes away, uh, and then she starts speaking to her mother and Mama Yaya, who give her guidance. Um, and then she meets a man. This is where the trouble always happens, isn't it? So she meets a man, and his name is John Indian. They fall in love. Um, and then John Indian brings her into the employment of his employer. Uh, they're no, not slaves. They are employees, but they're still treated like slaves. Um, there is some language in the book that people might find triggering. There is some language in here that maybe may be a little bit 
triggering to some. So John Indian brings her into the employment of, of his employer and she gets sick and dies and swears to Tatuba that she's, she's going to haunt her for the rest of her days. Whether she lives or dies, she's going to haunt her. Uh, they were sold to, as a pair, they were not married, but they were sold to um, Samuel Paris, uh, who is a reverend, and he took them from Barbados, married them on the ship because he's not going to have that in his house, um, married them on, married John Indian and Tatuba on the ship, and then took them off to Massachusetts. So they get there. Samuel Paris is not a good guy. <laughs> he's really not. Um, he's very hard on everyone and he wants, he would like um, a parish. He wants, he would like a flock. He wants to, you know, minister to people, but people don't really want that. And then he's sent off to Salem. So right now we're in Salem and Tatuba is watching over the children of of Mr. Paris and his wife. So she's looking after Betsy and Abigail. Abigail is a bit of a troublemaker and Betsy's like the very sweet one that gets along with Tatuba very well. But as Betsy gets older and Tatuba's trying to like sort of teach her the ways of, you know, being a woman and this, that, and the other, um, Abigail and friends kind of misconstrue certain situations and Betsy believes them. And then they start having fits and seizures um, on purpose uh, to blame Tatuba for bewitching them. So we're at that point right now and what's really interesting is seeing all of the all of the characters that we know and love from history. Like we have the Putnams coming in, Giles Corey is here, he's been made mention of, uh, Mary Sibley's been made mention of. If you watch the show Salem, also like a lot of those characters, uh, there's been mention of Increase in Cotton Mather. So I mean, these are all real people of history during those Salem witch trials and Tatuba was the first witch to be tried, or first woman to be tried as a witch. So, um, we're just getting to that point where it's going to boil over and I'm very excited to continue reading so far. I think it's really good. Um, I like the writing style. I like that she, like she's not, the author doesn't sort of dilly dally. Um, she doesn't, she uses her words well. Here, I've been curled up most of the day doing a lot of reading. So I wanted to talk about, I said the other day we were going to talk about the quotes from I, Tituba, the Black Witch of Salem, for the first half of the book, because I am just getting into part two. So, pretty excited. So, it looks like this part is going to get into the trial. Dun, dun, dun! Uh, and I'm very excited. I did find my book darts. So, you can see Danny, who commented on the last video, that I did undog ear everything, and right now I have my book darts. In case you're wondering, this is a one of those blankets that has a hood on it, so <laughs> I'm very, it has all the classic horror icons on it, which is why I got it, big horror movie fan. So, um, yeah, just been snuggled up with the dogs. Uh, one of the things I talked about, Mama Yaya, uh, so she's telling Tatuba, quote, you know, you will suffer during your life, a lot, a lot. She uttered those terrifying words perfectly, calmly, almost with a smile. But you will survive. <laughs> and then Tatuba was thinking, that's not very reassuring. So uh, she's just getting into those trials. It's obviously some foreshadowing into what is about to happen to her uh, as she's going to be tried, the first woman tried as a witch in Salem. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, something that just kind of triggers me. That's like, ha, no, no. If someone says this, ugh. Um, her husband, now husband, John Indian, um, says to her, uh, come my little mare, let me tame you. Like that sends up red flags for me immediately. Betsy is one of the Samuel, uh, the Samuel Paris as uh, one of his daughters. And they mentioned Anansi, the spider, in here. And I was introduced to Anansi through Neil Gaiman's books, through um, American Gods, and then, of course, the Anansi boys. Too. But I just thought it was fun uh, seeing Anansi show up, you know, and Tatuba telling the stories of Anansi the spider to Betsy and Abigail. And then the girls, Abigail, were teasing were teasing her, uh, were teasing Tatuba, you know, you must need a broomstick to travel. And then Tatuba laughs, you know, what a silly idea. What do you expect me to do with a broomstick? Maybe have to 
have to look into like how far back does that tale go does that does that myth go that witches ride on broomsticks i just thought that was kind of fun and this is just a nice example of some imagery and she really knows how to create ambiance in her words a grayish mist fell from the sky and wrapped in its folds and wrapped in its folds the forest of ships masts the piles of goods on the wharf and the massive outline of the warehouses. An icy wind blew and both John Indian and I shivered in our cotton clothes. Despite the shawls, Goodwife Paris and the children did the same. So you could just sort of feel how unpleasant it is there for them. Uh, it's definitely weather they're not used to. It's very new for John and Tatuba. And this one as prior military, I was active duty in the Navy for seven years and this one just kind of hits my heart a little bit. I'm like, mm. so uh, how strange it is, this love of our own country. We carry it in us like our blood and vital organs. I just really, really liked that. There is one thing, however, that I didn't know. Evil is a gift received at birth. There is no acquiring it. Those of us who have not come into this world armed with spurs and fangs are losers in every combat. So evil is a gift at birth. I thought that was a very interesting quote and I really liked it. And then just took a little commentary on Salem itself. That was Salem, a community that stole, cheated, and burgled while wrapped itself in the cloak of God's name. I have all my windows open so if this side's a little blasted on my face that's why. It's all good. We're talking books. We're not talking perfect lighting. I, Tituba. I have about 30 pages left, so I'm going to finish this up today, but I just wanted to check in where I am so far because a lot happened. Tituba's accusation has become official. Four men burst into her room in the middle of the night, chained her up, tied her up, and of course, no surprise to you, one of them was Samuel Paris. So she was asking him, what do you want from me? Why are you doing this? He said, I want you to denounce these other women that were accusing of witchcraft as well. And she refused to do it. She didn't want to do it. Which, good on her. They used John Indian as a way to try to get her to do it. So um, he's always been of the mindset of just do what they ask. You'll get through this easier. You'll make your life much easier if you just do what they ask you to do. And she's just not super into that idea. You know, she was always told by Mama Yaya and her mother Abina uh, that she would be the only one to survive this. So they take her off to a town called Ipswich, which is just plain fun to say. So they take her to Ipswich, uh, where she's put in the prisons, and she's put in the prisons with the other two women that she was accused with from Salem. They're both named Sarah, they have different last names. So, but they're freaking out and saying that she's torturing them just you know, to make themselves look innocent and her look even more guilty. So she was taken out of that cell and put in a hallway like a drafty hallway and just chained to the wall she was like that for days until finally one person in the prison said hey there's room in my cell just bring her in here so she can at least get some sort of warmth at night um and that person's name was hester hester and tatuba became became friends hester was in prison for adultery she is impregnated with another man's child while her husband is out overseas doing business uh, but they became friends and she did not like John Indian. She didn't want to hear about him. Um, she tells her that, you know, the world is too kind to men regardless of their color. And that's something that Tatuba remembers throughout the story now and again. She not only had her race against her, she had her gender against her. John Indian also denounced and accused two other women and a male judge. So he was accusing people because they asked him to so self-preservation is definitely his in his first and foremost driver one of the things that I thought was really cool in this book and I'll show you you see this and this goes on for another page after that is this is the actual deposition of Tatuba Indian these extracts are taken from the deposition of Tatuba Indian the original documents of the trial are kept in the Essex County archives a copy can be found at the Essex County Courthouse in Salem Massachusetts and then a couple pages later there is a moment of John Indian's deposition which is also held in the S S which is also held in the Essex County archives Pleh. So I thought that was really neat to have the, like the actual portions of their actual portions of their deposition in there. Upon legal advice coming in from London, 
all the people held as witches were pardoned. So a lot of people were reunited with their family. They got to go back on to, you know, to their day-to-day -day lives. And Stupa didn't have anybody. And then one day a merchant, a merchant came along. His name was Benjamin and actually, and bought Tuba. So she is still a slave. She is now sold to this man named Benjamin. Benjamin had just lost his wife and he had nine more, ch a wife and a couple children, but he still had nine more children to take care of. And he felt that they needed a female presence, so he bought Tituba. Now this is a Jewish family, so they do speak Hebrew. Uh, not a lot of the children spoke much English. The oldest daughter spoke the most. So uh, she had to sort of adjust to um, their prayer schedule, their language, their food, um, and just the traditions that go along with that faith. So that was something that was new for her. After a while, Tituba starts to get comfortable and she's just she really notices Benjamin's grief it had been about a year and they were you know I think it it had been about a year uh, that they were traveling together and she finally said hey I have a way for you to speak to your wife which I thought was super risky because oh my goodness what were you just in jail for was witchcraft so she does this ritual and he's able to speak to his wife and he's so happy um, she doesn't go back to prison, doesn't do any of that, but she does do that for him every single week. And as their bond starts to grow, they actually become lovers. They do talk a lot, uh, especially in their afterglow. He asked her one day, Tituba, if you could have anything in the world, what would you want? And without thinking, she just bleh, uh, freedom. Which of course, I mean, why wouldn't you say that? And he said, well, what would you do with that freedom? I would take one of your schooners and I would go back to Barbados. So all she wants is just to go home. And Benjamin, upon realizing what that would mean, would mean losing his wife all over again because he's still getting to talk to her. He doesn't grant her that she does not get her freedom. So that's where I'm at right now. And I'm gonna go finish this today and then I will give you a recap of my final thoughts on the whole book. Thanks. It's done. It's done. It's dun 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 Tituba has been given her freedom and made it home to Barbados. Tituba, everywhere she goes, is known as a witch from Salem. And that also and also the hatred of Benjamin being Jewish. Um a lot of people did not like him. A lot of people converged on the house and set it on fire. All nine of his children died. And that actually prompted him to give Tituba her freedom so she could go home. Tituba goes home, hooks up with this guy named Christopher. Uh, didn't work out. He's kind of a jerk. Uh, he's he's a leader of a, of a faction of still free, um, free folk on the island in Barbados. But they are running out of people. They don't have enough weapons. So... They're just trying to hold off um, the white people to become slaves. So he's doing his darndest. And it didn't work out between them. And she went and actually found her old cabin and took up residence there again. Turned out she was pregnant with that guy's child. Uh, she takes in this boy who is badly beaten. He becomes another, he, he tries to lead a revolt against the great house. Someone ratted on him and they set her cabin on fire. They both escaped, but then they were both hung. So Tituba and her unborn child were still hung in the end. And she was known still as a witch from Salem. She was told, hey, you should have been hung for this in Salem. We're gonna hang you for it now. So it still caught up with her and she still got hung as a witch. I really, really did enjoy this book. The author did a great job at creating like an ambiance and, and a setting. She does a good job at that. and. The only negative that I really have is there was too many endings. You know when you watch the third Lord of the Rings and you're like, okay, the movie is ending now. Okay, the movie's ending now. Uh, now. That's kind of how I felt with the end of this. I was like, there was about three or four different endings. We could have ended it anywhere. And another thing that I thought was maybe a little eerie was the spirits when she was, when she was crossed over. Um granted her a child that could be her child still to be born into the world and she picked a baby she looked through all these families she picked a baby and the baby's name was samantha 
So I thought that was kind of interesting and funny. Keep in mind, this is a historical fiction. No one knows for sure what happened to Tituba. There are some reports that say she stayed in Boston. Uh, she was bought by someone else and just lived out the rest of her life in Boston. There are other reports that she did go to Barbados. There are countless number of things. Uh, the author said in her, in her epilogue that she gave Tituba the ending that she wanted her to have. So while there's a lot of history in here, there are fictional parts as well. So that's Ida Tuba, Black Witch of Salem. I hope you enjoyed it with me. Uh, tomorrow, April 1st, no foolin', we're starting a new book together. So get your hands on one that I have been so excited about. And I've actually owned this book for a long time and haven't read it because I knew that this was coming up. So uh, it is The Girls by Emma Klein. So this one is during the violent end of the 1960s. That's really what I'm gonna say about it. Um, again, there's <laughs> it is history, there's a lot of violence in here. Um, take care of yourself when it comes to trigger warnings. So read up on the book. If you think this is something that's gonna trigger you in some way, please be aware and be careful. If it's something that you're into and are excited about it like I am, I cannot wait to start reading this with you for quarter two.